Now, please join me to the front of the steps. Wait a minute. Chocolate regenerates stem cells? It took me 48,000 tries. Now are about to witness a lot more uh, extraterrestrial activity. Watch this. MF, yes, I've actually found research papers that sh demonstrate that exposure to EMF stimulates mast cells. And a lot of you are struggling with mast cell activation. And if you are not turning off your Wi-Fi at night, you're not putting your phone on airplane mode, then you are activating your mast cells all night long. Turn that crap off. You don't need Wi-Fi on at night. Just go and unplug the router. I have a switch on my wall. Literally, I can just hit a switch and I can turn Wi-Fi on and off. And it's been great. Yo, not everybody needs to turn their Wi-Fi off. Some people have to worry about even crazier things. There are other frequencies, other bands that they're using to microwave all of us. That's what they say. That's what they say. Welcome back, goons. More, more for you page content. A little bit different format. Let's get right into it. Am I putting copper sticks in my garden? It's called electroculture and it helps your plants to grow bigger. I'm using simple copper installation thread and with a peeler, it's easy to get the vinyl off. Smart, huh? Then you take a bamboo stick, stick the copper wire at the bottom and twist it around the whole stick until you get to the end. And when you get to the end, make sure you coil it around and leave a bit of excess wire to point it into the air. And when you're done, it should look something like this. I'm using mine mostly for fruit and vegetables but flowers also flourish with this. Electroculture was actually banned because when you use this, you get bigger yields, bigger flowers, bigger fruits, bigger vegetables, and a lot of people don't like it when you don't eat the supermarket as much. Bro, and she's basically building a copper pyramid. We've heard about copper pyramids doing preservations. I wonder not only do you get abundant plants and fruits and whatnot, but do they preserve? Is it its own refrigerator? I mean, these are the things I wonder. Scientists once taught monkeys the concept of money and then disaster ensued. In 2005, a group of monkeys were given silver coins. It took months to teach the monkeys that these coins were a valuable means of exchange, but once they had that understanding is when the real fun began. They were given 12 coins and presented with jello cups and grapes, each costing a different price. Then scientists introduced price shocks, raising the price of one and dropping the price of the other, and the monkeys went for the better deal if they were low on cash, meaning they understood budgeting. Then gambling was introduced and monkeys were doing that. Then they figured out stealing. Then something really shocking began to happen. The scientists noticed that some male monkeys were using the coins to pay females for lovemaking. Those females would then use that money they earned to go buy food for themselves. Once scientists noticed that was happening, they did have to put an end to it because they wanted to ensure any future monkey business occurred as nature intended. Yo, it's the oldest profession. It's the oldest profession. Ah, uh, wait. Are they talking about monkeys or are they talking about humans? Man. Oh, man. I feel like they're talking about... In this next scary video caught on camera at the train station, this eerie footage captures an unexpected encounter with the notorious men in black at a train station. Who are these mysterious figures and what do they want? Watch this. The thing just imploded on itself. It don't even look like a human when you look at it. Did the men in black already know this was a, a UAP, an alien of sorts? I don't know. I don't know. But the guy never made contact. It imploded without contact. All right. Oh, my God. Stay away from people in suits. Just stay away from people. You are about to witness a lot more uh, extraterrestrial activity. Um, UFOs, UAPs, whatever you want to refer to the mass. Currently, there is a massive ship that's actually parked behind our sun. These ships actually charge using the sun. They charge using plasma energy. Y'all can laugh, y'all can say this is a joke. These are the same beings that actually popped up in uh, in Miami. 
whose coordinates were reversed and meant to go to Antarctica. For those that aren't aware, Antarctica is our entry point to Agartha, which is the center of the Earth. This is what Admiral Byrd was making reference to when he was talking about going to the center of the Earth. He showed us in movies like Journey to the Center of the Earth and a recent King Kong movie. All of these beings, giants, dragons, all exist in the center of the earth. You can always count on them to show us the truth through Hollywood cinema. The Bermuda Triangle is another entry point to the center of the earth. This is why in the King Kong movie, you've seen them going through the water. Oceans in the water is one big portal. This is also why there has been mentions of a large creature being seen swimming. Oh my God, there has been mentions of a large creature a leviathan of sorts in the waters oh boy oh boy i'm ready to go to the center of the earth i want to see what they got i want to meet the phase i want to meet the leprechauns the giants everything the dragons the dinosaurs everything everything let's make it happen we're gonna send a goon our this is an update in regards to the missing tiktoker who brought us the viral videos of the potentially new fault line that has arisen in wyoming and why this is so alarming is it's only 100 miles away from yellowstone which we know is a super volcano as i stated before in my previous video as of june 24th 2024 all of his videos that he has been documenting and posting since february have all been taken down and he has not posted one single new update it's as if he's disappeared if anybody knows who he is or recognizes him please let us know if he's okay take a look at this video this is another one of his videos i was able to find of this fault line you ready for something wild that's a fault line crack goes up there Comes down here. Crosses our road here. This is all sinking in here. Like that, it's literally moving. You can see it cross all the way through there. All the way on that hillside. I mean, if it is a fault line and things are uh, happening, earthquakes, whatever it may be to cause these lines. I mean, is a volcano about to erupt in Yellowstone? Is this it? Is this going to be the one? I'm ready for the reset. I'm ready for the reset. We're going to reset together. Don't you worry. Goons, interact with the video. We're doing different formats. I'm trying to get you more videos. And it is going very well. It is going very well. Get my average viewer duration up. That is the goal. This is an experiment with a spinning wheel. Quite a big wheel. It's of iron and weighs quite a lot of pounds. It's 13 inches diameter and it's mounted on a shaft three feet long. And you see lifting it like this is quite an effort in itself. You'll see that it weighs about 40 pounds. And when I talk under stress like that, because it is a heavy thing, to have to pick up. Now what I'm going to do next is to spin it up to two and a half thousand revs a minute. When it's spinning it becomes a live thing. Now whilst I'm lifting it I'm going to talk so that you shall see from my voice that I'm not under any stress of any kind. Wait a minute, I'm going to let go with my left hand and holding with my right only on the far end of the shaft, I shall lift it five feet in three seconds and I shall talk to you quietly as I do it because it goes up all on its own, you see, without any real conscious effort from me other than simply steering it round a path that I happen to know it likes to go. Then we have the problem of stopping it. Yeah, you have a problem of stopping it. Is that what's happening? Oh, we got to stop it in the water. Oh my God. Is this like how big anti-gravity uh, things are working? They're just moving and spinning in circles. Oh my God. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Is this the original Stan Lee before Stan Lee? He figured out the super... Never mind. We're going to keep it going. The Mandela effect and how the particle accelerator altered the weight of one electron and therefore sh destroyed our universe and shifted us into the universe that's directly next to it. And therefore things are different in this universe. So you um, believe that this thing that some people call the Mandela effect is actually real? Oh, it's absolutely real. Can you describe what it is for people who have never heard it before? Sure. So the Mandela effect is uh, the effect of some people 
thought that Nelson Mandela died in a, at a certain time, and other people remember it as a different time. And this goes for a lot of other things, you know, uh, Star Wars, um, classic videos, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. Everybody knows that. Well, well, if you actually look back to the original film, it's not Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. It's it's Magic Mirror on the Wall. And some people actually... Which, of course, it's not. It's not, In right. the reality I grew up in. Right, exactly. In an alternate expansion of our universe is... Even in my own scientific notes, I've found uh, rewritten signatures and things that are a little bit different from originally what I wrote. So um, how did that actually happen? Let's take your notebook or let's take Mirror Mirror on the Wall, and, like an old film, animated film. How did it actually change? Well, it never changed. We changed. You see, we were moving relative to our universe and then our, our universe destroyed. So now the universe moved, well, started to move, or I guess our parallel universes, our multi- Yo, this guy's me trying to understand everything in my head. Yeah, I'm at the point of like, hey, we imploded, CERN somehow imploded three Earths into one. I've heard that from Nathan, and I'm liking that. I'm like, that's why the Mandela effects exist. I come from Berenstein Bears. Do you? Do you? It was. I was so addicted to those books. How dare they change it and then try to trick me and be like, now nah, it's always been Berenstein. Nah, I have universes. All right, let's keep it going. And also, this, this kid, uh, it's so hard with parents, you know, uh, feedback with the kids oh is he really getting a download or as a parent coach them ah, i'm not here to judge but i'm sorry let's keep it going you make a clap in here after my clapping you will hear the normal echo now please join me to the front of the steps and when the sound of the clapping touches the steps according to the speed of the sound that frequency it will travel in the chamber. Yeah. But when it comes out, it will be equal to the song of a bird. <laughs> and we still don't know how to do that or how to do that. I wish that we have. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's shocking. And the sound of the temple and the bird is already in computers and sonograms to check the frequencies and the two of them they're equal bro that is amazing i've actually been to chichen itza oh man i've done the thing i've done the clapping you really clap you really clap and the um thing sounds like birds and the more people that clap they tricked an entire they, they, i don't even know if it's tricked they've literally told people that hey just keep clapping and you hear the birds and the birds were tied to the gods and uh away of uh, indicating the gods were present and then they would literally come around this um, thing and start clapping and it would sound like amazing birds to them. Oh my god, the things that those guys seen. Imagine what the Egyptian pyramid sounded like. Oh, see, sound technology's gotta be a thing. I'm feeling it. You guys notice how sterile the suburbs are? There's a lawn right here and I'm doing some landscaping work and there's some leaves on the ground and when I was cleaning up yesterday, some of the leaves were going into the grass. They're gonna say, oh my gosh, you need a leaf blower and you need to blow it all and take it away. If you were to say, hey, you know, I can just, just wait until you cut the grass and it will mulch it up and it'll be free fertilizer. They're like, no. You ever think about how all of these trees, you think of all this suburbia of America where people are paying to get their leaves cleaned up. This comes from a guy who used to make a living cleaning up leaves all day long. Think about a natural ecosystem. Think about how this used to all be the woods and every single one of these trees here that has grass around it has they people have spent thousands of dollars to take the leaves away from these trees you, you think of generations of nutrients fall on the ground take it away nutrients fall on the ground take it away but come on guys so all of these trees are lacking minerals and nutrients because the leaves are supposed to create a layer below them to turn into soil but instead it's being taken away that's a golf course they're spraying crazy amounts of fertilizer just to have that maintained all the time this is it's across the hill i'm not going to walk over there the grass still grows if you mulch the leaves into the soil it's kind of like baling hay if you grow the grass and then you take it away all the time eventually that soil is going to be robbed of nutrients it's supposed to be a cycle when you're baling hay the cycle of nature is animal eats the grass animal poops pretty close to where the grass was eaten and then it grows more grass. Instead, it's cut the hay, take it away. The tree cycle is, hey, drop the leaves, fertilize the ground, turns into more tree growth, good to go. But now it's drop the leaves, take it away, drop the leaves, take it away. Eventually there's not gonna be anything left. Food for thought. Yo, I've left the leaves on the lawn before and sometimes you just get a pile that 
doesn't disintegrate and looks unsightly and then sometimes you leave the leaves they disintegrate and then your grass turns yellow uh maybe there is vitamins being fed but it's also killing the grass so it's like hey you got to find that happy medium i'm not a um expert in grass growing or uh you know deficiency in plants but it sounds like this guy is all right let's keep it going when a fly lands on your food most people think it just starts eating it but flies actually can't chew like humans so instead they sort of puke up a special type of saliva right onto your meal this saliva contains digestive enzymes that break down your food into a slurpable liquid the fly then uses its proboscis to suck it up like a smoothie which is how they consume your food in the near future when you get a glass of tap water there's a chance that it could have come from your toilet it's called purified sewage water and it's already a thing in certain cities you see, when you flush, it flows through a pipe and into a basin underground. From here, it meets up with a water treatment plant, where the sewage undergoes a process called water reclamation. This process removes large solids and uses bacteria to break down any other organic matter. It's then filtered and disinfected using ultraviolet light. And once it has met the standards for drinking water, it's sent right back up to your tap for you to enjoy. Make sure those standards for drinking water be high. Get some water tests. Hey, maybe they're lying on the water test too. Regardless, the fly thing was wild. The fly thing was wild. It's, it's eating, eating a smoothie of its own mucus and food. So as, as soon as it lands, oh boy, all food's gone bad in my eyes. Don't let the flies land on the food. Your cell phone emits radiation. I'm going to show you what it does to you. First of all, I'm going to take a strong muscle here and hold as I push. Now, if you're putting this right up against your ear, watch what happens you are radiating your brain. In fact, for you that wear ear pods, that's like putting your head in a microwave oven. In fact, it can cause brain cancer. You have someone you know at age 41, what happened to them? He died. Brain cancer? Yes. And what happened was, was he ever using his phone? He was on his phone all the time. Well, guess what? Now, if we have it further away, let's see what happens, okay? Now, as you get closer and closer, bingo. So there's a biofield and that radiation is going into you. So you don't want to have it against your head. At least have it on a speakerphone and further away and never put it in your pocket and walk around with it with it on. That can be radiating your body as well. Yo, some of this stuff I feel like was a little fake. I don't know. I've seen people answer the phone at the gym and they've been doing their exercises fine. I haven't seen any issues, maybe over time. But if she's having issues that quickly, oh boy, she got to stay away from all phones. Um, interesting. Phone radiation is a thing. Phone radiation hurts people. Uh, keep it away from your pants. And then if you're upset about the people doing speakerphone all the time, hey, they want you to do speakerphone. Don't you want to learn the conversations? Teddy, they're doing speakerphone on the airplanes now. You stop it. You stop it. Wait a minute. Chocolate regenerates stem cells? Cacao. Yeah. It's actually used to make chocolate. Dark chocolate, obviously. All chocolates has some cacao in it, except for white chocolate. Cacao actually comes from a plant. When it's ripe, you cut it open. It's the seed, the bean, that actually is dried and it's like fermented. like a coffee bean. And then roasted. And that turns into what is the core ingredient that goes into making chocolate. The flavanols, yeah. the polyphenols, are in that bean. Studies have been done to show that the flavanols in cocoa stimulate stem cells to come out of your bone marrow in your bloodstream, and they go out and they find wherever it needs to be repaired. If it's in your heart, they'll fix it. If it's in your liver, they'll fix it. If it's in your skin, they'll fix it. Clinical studies have been done with high flavanol cocoa to show that men who are in their 60s with heart disease, they could actually just have two cups of dark chocolate hot cocoa a day for a month, yeah. and they doubled the amount of stem cells in their bloodstream and their circulation improved measurably. And then what's even more important is that there was a study called the Cosmos study that was completed yeah. recently that showed that eating high flavonol cocoa decreases the risk of cardiovascular death, like I said, <laughs> exactly. By eating the same thing that you used to make chocolate. So we're not telling people to go out to have chocolate, which is a confection. No, it's got no. a lot of sugar yeah. and all kinds of yeah, other yeah. stuff in it, but it's the stuff underlying Underneath it, that. the core of it. Yo, that is wild. Everyone go have some dark chocolate, you know, do the thing. Have that dark hot cocoa. Have that dark hot cocoa. Interesting. Interesting.
All right, let's keep it going. Swimming in a chlorinated pool, toxic to your body. Let's test the water and find out. So let's use this EPA approved chlorine test to test the original pool water. I'm gonna stick my hand in and then we're gonna see how much is absorbed through the skin. Put it in there for 20 seconds. So this one's actually sitting at about between 0.4 and 0.6, but let's see what happens if I swam in the water, say for 30 seconds. So why is chlorine toxic to your body? The chlorine can react with organics and create disinfectant byproducts in your body, which along with chlorine have mutagenic effects effects, meaning they can cause or be linked to cancer. It can affect your thyroid function. Instead of pulling iodine into your thyroid, it actually pulls in chlorine, making it an endocrine disruptor. But let's see if this chlorine absorbs. Let's pull it out. So it looks like we absorbed the most of the chlorine in just 30 seconds that's inside that pool water. This is not good for your body. What can you do to protect your kids? First of all, you can take a shower before you get into the pool too. You can slather on coconut oil. You can also limit the time that you are swimming. Lastly, as soon as you're done swimming, get that bathing suit off and shower with soap and water. This is going to protect your children and you from chlorine exposure. Bro, I've been to Florida. I've seen some pool bodies that are, you know, quite old and they are still around chlorine and they seem to be doing fine. And I also have uh, fish I keep and they have uh, chlorine in the water, but we use prime to get rid of the chlorine. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, with chlorine, it's a, it's a tough thing. I mean, if it's not direct exposure, I feel like you're okay in pools and stuff. But uh, do your own research. Do your own research. If it's affecting you negatively, probably do less of it. Seen a scientist getting this mate. Just watch. We are looking at Oscar, the first human modular prototype that is able to live in various settings. What's going to happen is that I'm going to connect the brain to the heart module to activate the blood circulation. Now, the lung is going to start breathing. You can see both organs are now collaborating. I can add a kidney module. And if I add a lymph module, it starts actuating the organism to move. Now it's looking for the optimal temperature, which is 37 degrees. If I had another limb, let's gather it, recognize it, and beneficiate from new solutions. Bro, what the heck is this? What am I looking at? Is this like electrostatic things that are moving the um, the muscles and causing them to contract like that? There's no way they bring them back to life. If it's, uh, it's artificial, it's activating the blood circulation with no blood. Is this an insect? What is this? Is this a man-made meat? I, I don't know what I'm looking at. Aldi, the supermarket chain, is considering selling edible insects to help families. It's me, not Sester. It's absolutely disgusting. I'm sure Bill Gates is over the moon because that's been the plan all along to get us to stop eating normal food and to eat bugs while the elite at the top eat their Wagyu beef and lobster and watch all the peasants at the bottom eat, eat insects and rats because it will save the planet, apparently. Exactly. Well, it won't be on my menu. I hope it's not on yours, Esther. Good reason to avoid Aldi and go and find a decent steak. Hey, were you going to eat that chocolate? You're eating bugs. You've always been eating bugs. They've been feeding bugs to us before you even knew it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, and not uh, truly all these fault. We got to get our protein somehow. We're going to be having a hard time keeping our livestock go, uh, going. So, you know, got to find other sources of protein. They just thinking ahead. All right, let's just do uh, two more. Well, it took me 48,000 tries, but I have invented electrolytic resin and it fucking works. I've just got this hooked up and it continues to climb. So this is only millivolts, but we'll see how high we can get. This, right now it's just reading one cell, but I think I've learned something important from this. And still, we're getting pretty, starting to slow down. Now normally in a battery in a galvanic cell, you'd have a liquid that is what's connecting the two electrodes together. But in this case, I've taken that liquid and turned it into a solid resin form. You can kind of take a look at this and see 
just how solid that really is, which is pretty cool to me. So you can see here it's still climbing. Um, it takes a minute for it to start juicing. I'm not really sure what that's about. Now, I don't know if I'm the only person to ever invent electrolytic resin, but I cannot find it anywhere. So if y'all know about it, let me know. Or if you can think of any cool ideas that I should experiment with. I actually have this saved for um, another project. I created it to help me create something else. So <laughs> hopefully it works out. But either way, I am super happy that this resin is working. Yo, that's kind of cool. What is this, like, uh, liquid organite that once it hardens turns into organite or something? That's kind of cool. You can harness the power or the energy coming out of a crystal, and she's found a way. I wonder if there's other people that have done this and they're using that. Uh, yeah, it's millivolts for now, but what if the crystals are bigger? Do you then harness more? How does it work? Do you uh, put in multiples of them, like batteries, and then they increases the power? All right, let's just do one more. Just one more to end them all. Hey, a young man on acid realize that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjective there is no such thing as death we have to spread out the world life is only a dream and we are the imagination of ourselves i was too Oh, third eye be real. Oh, man. Don't be afraid of death. It's only the beginning. Oh, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Welcome, goons. You made it to the end. Welcome. Yeah, to the end. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Things are different. Uh, doing different formats. How are you enjoying this? A uh, little bit of a um, shorter uh, duration of the video, but you get way more videos and you still get to see me. Don't worry. We can still hang out on Sundays during the live stream and you get full teddy. Full teddy. All right. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by yet again. Videos on the screen now. Click on either one of them. Get your goon fix in. The one in the middle, you can subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.